Who says bikes belong in garages? Hey guys, welcome back. If you're anything like me, you understand that having a garage for a workshop means storage space is a commodity. So this summer when we bought new bikes for our kids, our step one was to build a shed to store them in and keep the bikes out of the elements. It didn't take long to knock out the basic shape of the shed, but the thing that we kept running into was how unlevel the ground was. I want to keep a consistent pattern of the 1x6s that wrap around both sides and the front of the shed. So I use this chunk of half inch plywood just to gap everything out as I was going. I use a 2x6 for the fascia around the top of the shed just to kind of give it a little bit more depth and a little bit more definition between the top and the sides. I literally miscalculated the lumber I needed by two 2x4s. So I did use some untreated 2x4s that I had on hand. Because these are for the roof trusses which will be hidden underneath the roofing material, I wasn't too concerned about them being affected by the elements. Segue to the roofing material that we used, which was this corrugated PVC roof paneling. Super easy to work with and really kept the cost down on what we were trying to do. I lined it up so on every overlapping seam there would be one of these cross braces. It was recommended to use these special lag bolts that have like a rubber gasket on them just to help seal off from any water leaking through. Once the roof was all buttoned up, I went to cutting out my pieces that I needed to make the doors. It's inevitable that a kid's gonna swing on one of these doors at some point, so I decided to use lap joints just to kind of give it as much strength as possible. So to save time, I set up my dado stack to do this. Pro tip, make sure none of the teeth are touching when you're putting your dado stack together. Just to make life easier, I set up a stop lock on my table saw so I could just run through all the pieces I needed to do. If you don't have a table saw or a dado blade, you can always use a depth stop on your miter saw just to be able to nibble away at the material. I was lucky enough to have the fawns come help me after I'd finished cutting all my pieces to length. For extra strength, we used type on three as well as screws in all the corners just to hold everything as secure as possible. Hey! P.S. These self-centering drawer butts from Rockler are the bee's knees. I was able to hold the door in place when my son came in and put all of our starter screws in. We loosely tacked in the 1x6 that we'd be using as the cladding just to get things started and lined up across the front. Then we went back and forth just cutting each piece as needed to make sure that the grain somewhat was consistent. A trick that I also use for hanging gates is to tack all the boards in place and do it as one piece. I think this is an easier way to keep things level and then I can just come back with my skill saw and just cut straight down the middle of the two pieces and release the doors from each other. For extra strength we did add some stakes just to make sure that we gave the shed as much of a chance not to move as possible. I cut just little spacer blocks just so I would have some sort of a nailing surface for the last two angle cuts that had to be attached. But the final two cuts were brought to you by my digital angle finder. It was pretty easy to line everything up and find the random angle for the 2x6 and then I would just transfer that and line it up with the track of my track saw. In fact, no boards were wasted in the making of these cuts. I was able to get my first piece cut and in place within, well, like one and a half cuts. Really want to say how much I appreciate you checking out my channel and just spending your time watching the videos that I make. If you would have done anything differently in this build, I look forward to connecting and <laughs> disagreeing in the comments below. <laughs> just joking. I'm pretty happy that we went with this brown treated material as opposed to the traditional green treated boards that you typically see. I kept the hardware as simple as possible. On the right hand door I installed one of these pins that would just lock the right door in place and then the left door which is the main door that the kids would be going in and out of we used a little bit more sophisticated of a latch. And with the latch installed I was done. Thanks again for watching. If you guys like what you see, I'd love to see you hit that like button. Until next time, 
Take care.